Welcome back to Anatomy and Physiology on Catalyst University. My name is Kevin Tokoff. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. In this video, we're going to be discussing the subclavian artery, and we're going to be doing that by looking at its source, and then also a bunch of the branches that come off of it. And we want to also understand some of the major structures and muscles that are supplied by each of these arteries. So let's begin by talking about the heart. Remember the heart has an aorta that's coming off of the left ventricle and off of the aorta, which is obviously not shown here, we'd have the arch of the aorta or the aortic arch. Now the aortic arch has three branches. Uh, the first one is the brachiocephalic artery. That one is this right here. This is our brachiocephalic. Um, now the brachiocephalic artery goes toward the right side of the body and it bifurcates into a right common carotid artery, which we're, we will not consider here, and a right subclavian artery. However, remember the arch of aorta also gives off two other branches, which are directly the left common carotid and the left subclavian. Um, so again, remember with that arch of the aorta that the left common carotid and subclavian arteries come directly off of the arch, whereas the right ones, their versions, have to come off the brachiocephalic artery and it has to bifurcate into them. But regardless how you get them, we have a right and a left subclavian artery. We're going to focus on the right one, but just understand that once you have the subclavian artery, they're the same on both sides. Now, the subclavian artery, of course, is going to originate from, in this case, the brachiocephalic artery on the right side. The left subclavian artery would originate from the arch of the aorta. But we can follow this over, and it doesn't last very long, and it's eventually going to come over here and pass over the margin of the first rib. So here's your first rib. Notice it partly goes under the clavicle. Okay, here's your first rib. And when this subclavian artery passes over the margin of the first rib, right where my mouse is, it's going to change names to axillary artery. And that's the same on both sides, left and right. So this span right here, this is really all the subclavian artery is. It's pretty short. Axillary artery is a little bit longer. We're going to cover that in the next video. So subclavian artery. It has three parts. And you're going to find that when you go to the axillary artery, it's going to have a similar situation, three parts. And the division of those three parts is really a muscle. In the case of the axillary artery, it's the pectoralis minor. In the case of the subclavian artery, what divides the three parts is a muscle that's not shown here for the sake of clarity because it get too crowded, but it's the anterior scalene or scalenus anterior. Now, the scalenus anterior has an insertion um, really on the first rib. Okay, so the scalenus anterior is going to be more or less kind of right here. In fact, we can more or less assume it's going to be right here where this artery, this trunk branches off, which we'll see is the costal cervical trunk. This is really where anterior scalene is. Okay, um, and so if you're before anterior scalene, you're the first part. If you're deep to or posterior to anterior scalene, you're the second part. And then the third part is lateral to or after you go past anterior scalene. All right. So let's talk about the first part of the subclavian artery. We have three major branches that come off of it. The first one is the vertebral artery. The second one is the thyrocervical trunk, which is coming off around the same time as the internal thoracic artery. And those are our three branches. First one we'll mention is the vertebral artery. Now, I cover this in a lot more detail in another video over the cervical spine, but the vertebral artery is going to ascend up and it's going to enter the transverse foramen of C6. Okay, it's going to bypass the transverse foramen of C7. It's going to go into the transverse foramen of C6 and keep going up like that pattern. It's going to go through the transverse foramen of C5 and then that of C4 and so on and so forth. And it's going to travel up the neck like that. And eventually, when it gets past C1, it'll go up into the brain, basically, and it will become the basilar artery. And so the right vertebral artery over here will fuse with the left vertebral artery into the basilar artery, which we will cover again in a future video when we talk about the circle of Willis. But it suffices to say the vertebral, vertebral artery is going to travel up the neck in the transverse foramina starting at C6, and it's going to fuse with the other one um, near the brain as the basilar artery. So hopefully that makes sense. That's your first branch. 
The second one, we'll call it the internal thoracic artery. That's your second branch. So the internal thoracic artery actually travels downward. Um, it's going to travel really in the anterior chest wall, okay, anterior thoracic wall. And it's really just going to be responsible for giving off uh, mainly um, intercostal arteries, that is the anterior intercostal arteries. Um, we'll be covering the internal thoracic artery in a lot more detail when we start talking about the thorax. But for now, just understand it's a second branch coming off of the first part of the subclavian artery. The third branch is really a trunk. It's the thyrocervical trunk. So that's the third branch coming off of the first part of the subclavian artery. The thyrocervical trunk comes up right here, and it's going to give off a bunch of branches. Okay? First of all, it's going to give off a suprascapular artery. Now this artery is going to supply two of the rotator cuff muscles. Those are supraspinatus and infraspinatus. And interestingly, uh, these two muscles are also supplied by the same nerve. That's the suprascapular nerve. I have a separate video where I go into this artery and its pathway um, in a lot more detail. And I'll try to remember to link that in the description, but it's in the rotator cuff uh, part of my playlists. So suprascapular artery, supra and infraspinatus muscles. Then we go up further the thyrocervical trunk and it's going to give off another branch. This is called the transverse cervical artery. Transverse cervical artery is going to supply the trapezius muscle in all three parts of it, both uh, the superior, middle, and inferior parts, and then also sternocleidomastoid. Again, interestingly, these two muscles are also supplied by the same nerve. That is uh, cranial nerve 11, the spinal accessory nerve. So same artery, same innervation. So transverse cervical artery. Now, We'll come back to this in a minute. There's some confusion here. But understand for now that the thyrocervical trunk, once it gives off those two branches, it's going to continue on as the inferior thyroid artery. And the inferior thyroid artery, along with the superior thyroid artery, which comes off at a different point in another video, they're going to supply the thyroid gland, which is an endocrine gland that makes thyroid hormones. That's the inferior thyroid artery in a continuation of the thyrocervical trunk superiorly. Okay. Now, before we go any further, I want to mention this. The transverse cervical artery is going to give off a superficial branch, okay, in addition to supplying trapezius and sternocleidomastoid. In some individuals, it will also give off the dorsal scapular artery. Now, we're going to come back to this at the end of the video because understand there is some very strong genetic variation. But in some individuals, the dorsal scapular artery will come off the transverse cervical artery, and the dorsal scapular artery is going to supply the rhomboids major, rhomboid minor, and levator scapulae. That's also kind of nice because these three muscles are also innervated by the dorsal scapular nerve. So again, they're going to have dorsal scapular artery, both rhomboids and the levator scapulae. We're going to come back to this at the very end, but understand that about 25% of individuals will have this artery coming off of the transverse cervical artery. Okay, let's keep going. That was the first part of the subclavian artery. Now, the subclavian artery is going to continue laterally, and it's going to pass underneath the anterior scalene, kind of like you can see here in this picture. And when it goes behind or posterior to the anterior scalene muscle, that's going to be the second part of the subclavian artery. And behind the anterior scalene, it's going to give off the costocervical trunk. Okay? The costocervical trunk is going to give two things, one a deep cervical artery, and then also the highest intercostal artery. So um, I mentioned that the internal thoracic artery from part one gives off the anterior intercostal arteries. Well, it gives off most of them, but it turns out there's a highest one at the highest level for the first intercostal space that's given off via the highest intercostal artery. Okay? Um, it's just that the internal thoracic artery will give off most of those. The highest one is from the highest intercostal artery, so hopefully that makes sense. Those are from the costocervical trunk, and those come off the second part of the subclavian artery posterior to the anterior scalene. Now, as the subclavian artery continues past the anterior scalene, so lateral to it, we enter the third part of the subclavian artery. Now, I don't have anything shown here, and there's a reason why. Okay? Um, so the reason why I don't have anything shown there is because the third part in some individuals doesn't have any branches. Okay? That's in the 25% of individuals that have the dorsal scapular artery coming off of the transverse cervical artery. However, in some individuals, 
the third part of the subclavian artery can actually be what gives off the dorsal scapular artery. So in most individuals, about 75%, the dorsal scapular artery does not branch from the transverse cervical artery. Instead, it branches really from the third part of the subclavian artery right before the subclavian artery passes over the margin of the first rib and becomes the axillary artery. But it'll give off in the third region, or third part, dorsal scapular artery, which again in the same way is going to supply those muscles supplied by the dorsal scapular nerve, rhomboid major, rhomboid minor, and levator scapulae. Okay? So hopefully this video gave you a good understanding of the major branches that are coming off of the subclavian artery and any important structures that they tend to supply blood to. Now, in the next video, we're going to continue on with the subclavian artery. We're going to see that it passes over the margin of the first rib, and when it does so, it becomes the axillary artery. And this has a very similar setup, uh, but instead of passing under the anterior scalene, it's going to pass under a different muscle, pectoralis minor. So we'll see something very very similar. Please make sure to like this video and subscribe to my channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.